Sony's FX3 series has become a favorite among indie filmmakers, content creators, and professionals looking for a compact yet powerful cinema camera. With the FX3 II on the horizon, rumors are heating up about what kind of sensor technology it might introduce. One of the most exciting and controversial possibilities is the inclusion of a new SPAD single photon avalanche diode sensor. Recent reports suggest Sony Semiconductor is exploring mass production of a full-frame 4K SPAD sensor that integrates a global shutter and leverages their next-generation two-layer transistor pixel technology. At first glance, this could sound like the dawn of a new era in digital cinematography. A full-frame SPAD sensor with global shutter capabilities is a dream combination on paper, potentially redefining low-light performance, motion capture, and overall image quality. But as camera experts, engineers, and industry insiders dive deeper into the technical aspects, it becomes clear that such an innovation is not without major challenges. The hype surrounding this tech is substantial, but the real question is, could this advanced sensor realistically find its way into the upcoming Sony FX3 II, or is it destined for more specialized, high-end applications? Let's explore what SPAD sensors actually are, their strengths and limitations, and why they may or may not be a practical choice for the FX3 II. A camera meant to balance performance, portability, and price. SPAD sensors operate very differently from traditional CMOS or CCD sensors. Rather than collecting light over time in an analog fashion, they detect individual photons, tiny particles of light, using light avalanche response LAR principles. This level of sensitivity means SPAD sensors can register even the faintest amount of light with exceptional speed and accuracy, making them ideal for specific imaging tasks like scientific experiments, depth mapping, time-of-flight cameras, and low-light surveillance. One of the most intriguing features of SPAD technology is its potential for a true global shutter. A global shutter ensures that every pixel on the sensor is exposed at the exact same moment, eliminating the rolling shutter distortion that plagues conventional CMOS sensors when capturing fast-moving subjects. In filmmaking, especially in action sequences, handheld shooting, or drone footage, rolling shutter issues can lead to distracting skewing and wobble in the image. A global shutter sensor, especially one that's full-frame and high-resolution, could be a monumental upgrade for cinema cameras. For this reason, many initially believe that a SPAD-equipped Sony FX3 II could be a revolutionary tool, offering unparalleled low-light sensitivity and motion clarity in a compact cinema body. The thought of such a cutting-edge sensor powering a mainstream mirrorless-style video camera sparked excitement across the filmmaking community. However, excitement often gets ahead of feasibility. Despite the apparent advantages of SPAD technology, the real-world application of such a sensor in a camera like the Sony FX3 II is highly unlikely, at least for now. One of the biggest barriers is power consumption. Full-frame SPAD sensors operating at 4K resolution are incredibly power-hungry. Unlike traditional imaging sensors, they require constant high-speed operation to reset and detect individual photons, and this draws a lot of energy. In fixed-position systems like lab cameras or industrial vision setups where power can be supplied continuously and heat dissipation isn't as constrained, this isn't a major issue. But in a handheld camera like the FX3 II, which is designed for mobility and often powered by small batteries, such power demands would be a serious drawback. Sony's FX series, including the FX3 and FX30, are designed with run and gun shooters in mind. Content creators who need long battery life, compact size, and efficient thermal performance. A full-frame SPAD sensor doesn't align with those priorities. Cost is another prohibitive factor. Global shutter sensors are generally expensive to produce, and SPAD technology compounds that issue further. According to estimates, a 24MP global shutter sensor could cost upwards of $6,000 on its own, several times the expected retail price of the entire FX3 II camera body. Integrating such a component would not only blow past the FX3-2's target price point, but also alienate its core audience of indie and solo creators looking for accessible, high-quality tools. Technical hurdles also remain. SPAD sensors, while highly sensitive, 
face challenges with quantum efficiency QE, a metric that indicates how well a sensor converts incoming light into usable image data, because SPADs can only register a few photons at a time before needing to reset. Any light that arrives during those brief reset periods is ignored. This reduces their effective light collection capability and means that while they may perform well in extremely low light scientific settings, they aren't necessarily superior to CMOS sensors for general purpose photography or filmmaking. In short, the SPAD sensor sounds amazing in theory, but in practice, its limitations make it unsuitable for compact mirrorless style cinema cameras, at least for now. With SPAD unlikely to make the cut, what's a more realistic expectation for the Sony FX3 II? The answer lies in Sony's own stacked Exmor sensor technology, specifically their two-layer transistor pixel design. This new sensor architecture separates the photodiodes and transistors into independent layers, giving both more room to operate. The result is faster data readout, lower noise, and better dynamic range, features that directly improve video performance. Sony has already started integrating this sensor structure into its Alpha series and other video-centric models. While it doesn't support a global shutter, it significantly reduces rolling shutter artifacts and improves image clarity during fast motion. For filmmakers, this is a meaningful upgrade that enhances the shooting experience without radically altering the cost or size of the camera. Moreover, this technology fits perfectly within the FX32's design philosophy. Sony's FX series isn't trying to compete with the Venice or high-end cinema gear that prioritizes ultimate image quality over practicality. Instead, it's about striking a balance, giving creators advanced video features in a compact, travel-ready, and relatively affordable body. The Exmor stacked sensor is also more efficient in terms of battery usage and heat management, two areas where SPAD currently struggles. It's the smart, practical choice that provides noticeable benefits to filmmakers without requiring a fundamental rethinking of the camera's design, pricing, or intended user base. While it's unlikely that the Sony FX3 II will introduce a SPAD sensor, that doesn't mean Sony is shelving the technology. On the contrary, many experts believe SPAD sensors are being developed for more specialized use cases within Sony's portfolio, particularly in systems like the Sony Venice series. Despite the allure of cutting-edge SPAD technology, the Sony FX3 II is expected to follow a more grounded but still highly impressive path. Rather than chasing experimental features that aren't production-ready, Sony is likely to focus on improving what matters most to its core users. Better low-light performance, faster readout speeds, enhanced autofocus, and reduced rolling shutter. Everything the next gen stack Exmor sensor can deliver. This isn't a compromise, it's a calculated evolution. The FX3 II will probably continue to offer professional-grade video features in a compact form factor, with strong support for 4K recording, 10-bit color, advanced codecs, and robust heat management. For most users, especially solo shooters and indie filmmakers, that's exactly what they want. SPAD might one day become a major force in consumer cameras, but for now, its home lies in specialized equipment and future cinema flagships. In the meantime, the Sony FX3 II looks set to remain a balanced, high-performance tool that builds on the success of its predecessor without overcomplicating its mission. For filmmakers waiting on the FX3 II, the outlook is promising, even if the SPAD revolution is still just over the horizon.